Hi, I'm Perry Franklin, and today I'll make a tower structure in Creo's Advanced Framework Extension. I've already sketched the skeleton for the structure I'll be making. I'll select the square profile for the horizontals. Since all the pieces are the same, I can reassemble from existing profiles. Actually, I've decided to need a larger size too. I can change the size of the profile by selecting the Modify tab. I'll choose my new size, then click Replace Profile by New Instance. I'll use a miter joint to connect all my pieces. It seems to work okay, but not all the joints are lined up. That's because this profile is actually backwards. I can select the Move tab from within the Profile dialog box to change the starting and end point on the instance. Now the part is correctly aligned with the rest. Now I'll create the vertical legs. I can copy one profile instance for all 12 pieces since they're all the same length. I'll place my first profile. It's angled incorrectly, so I'll use the Move Tab's Rotate tool to reorient it. At the top, the square profiles stick out a bit. I'd rather have them be aligned with the verticals, so I'll lower them a bit using the Move tool. There are nine default positions for every profile. The blue line represents the curve that the profile follows. I'll select the top position. Actually, I've decided to put points on the end of the vertical pieces so that the tower digs into the ground. I can't just modify the bottom pieces though, because that would modify the top pieces as well. First, I'll create a new profile instance for the bottom pieces. On the Modify tab, I'll click Replace Profile by a copy of itself. Now I'll use this new profile instance to replace the rest of the bottom pieces. Now I'll use the end tools to modify the bottom. I'll click Modify Profile End using dimensions. I'll select one of the bottom pieces and type 45 degrees for the first angle, 45 degrees for the second angle, and extend the profile by 8 inches. This gives the tower some vicious looking feet. Next I'll create the cross pieces. I'll create a new subassembly before I create this first part. You create a new subassembly the same way you create a new part, by selecting a curve and a datum plane to describe orientation. I want all my cross piece parts to be in this subassembly, so I'll select it as the active assembly. I'll rotate the piece into position and place the pieces. When I joint these, I'll need four joints in the middle. However, AFX won't allow more than one joint per end, so I'll use the planar trim tool to finish jointing the pieces. I'll make the top joints by using T joints. I could use T-joints for the bottom, but then there wouldn't be much of a surface area for welds. Instead, I'll use Replace Surface to extend the cross pieces all the way out to the feet. I can reassemble the subassembly around the bottom. It's reassembled the same way one reassembles profiles. Select the curve to follow and a plane for orientation. There's still one more thing we need to do. Where the subassemblies meet, there's a lot of interference. Unfortunately, I can't just use a miter joint because the angles are too extreme. I'll use planar trim in addition to some planes I've previously placed in order to trim off the interference. With more of the same, I can create the rest of the tower. This was an in-depth example using AFX.
There are still more features that haven't been covered in this tutorial, so check out more content from PTC University or learningexchange.ptc.com.